I'll be an NBA player by day, a doctor by night. I told this to everyone who asked me what I wanted to be. Some caveats, though. I was eight. I thought I'd grow to NBA size. And I figured doctors were real-life mages, the ones that cast healing spells. Until now, no one has pressed me to answer, why medicine? Because aspiring to be in the NBA as a four-foot-tall Vietnamese boy was more provocative. That was the actual introduction to my personal statement. The same one that landed me at my dream school, UCLA Medicine. Not only did this orange onion get me into medical school, it's the reason I got there in one piece. Before I explain how all of this happened, we first have to understand what most people do with their medical school applications, and more importantly, why they do what they do. After working with hundreds of pre-med students over the last six years, I've noticed that everyone's extracurricular activities all sound the same. There's a fancy sounding research experience with unpronounceable genes like ABC, easy as one, two, three. Remember, I'm a cardiologist volunteering my time to be part of the admissions committee. Your work on neuroplasticity post ischemic damage makes zero sense to me. There's also the volunteer experience that you clearly didn't care about. And so you cover it up with fancy sounding phrases like high touch areas, red tape, and my personal favorite, understand what it meant to be a patient with acute or chronic disease. What does that even mean? Wrap it all with a solid 3.88 GPA, 517 MCAT, and some teaching or community work, and you have the quintessential average pre-med student. Now this is a huge problem. Over 50,000 pre-meds apply each year with applications looking just like that. Different experience names with slightly different hours, but overall the exact same feeling. And that's both good and bad. The good thing is that it's important to have fundamental experiences like community work, research, teaching, volunteering, all packaged with a strong GPA and a strong MCAT score. Honestly, for a pre-med to have all of that, that's the sugar, the spice, and the everything nice. But we're missing that chemical X. Imagine again that cardiologist admissions committee member reading your application years down the line. Is it more or less the exact same as the 10 applications he's read before lunch? If so, all the cardiologist knows is that you're a great student and an active member of your community. Is that all you are? I'd hope not. I know we're missing that you're an avid runner. You just killed the LA Marathon. I know we're missing that you played League of Legends collegiately. For me, that app would have missed my fanaticism for basketball. The summer I coached youth basketball, the late nights I refereed I am basketball, and the thousands of hours I ordered my teammates around so I could get a breather and call it leadership. These are the things that make you, you. And the very second I bring that up, these woo-woo alarms in your body blare and they're screaming, cool. That's part of me, but it has nothing to do with my medical school application. And while I hear where you're coming from, I respectfully disagree. Coaching youth basketball helped me break down complex schemes with many moving parts into simple, manageable, bite-sized pieces that literally a seven-year-old could understand. Refereeing intramural basketball put me in front of 10 frustrated, high-testosterone competitive athletes and taught me how to manage conflict and passion effectively. You can imagine these skills being useful in medicine, where you have to help patients interpret difficult concepts like their hemoglobin A1C, or convince a patient to self-inject insulin when they don't feel anything is wrong with their body right at this second. Many patients will have their own two cents. Many patients will have different opinions than you. Rất là tấu, rất là khỏe, rất là healthy. Uống vô, ngủ ngon, không nhức đầu, không chóng mặt. Thức khuya học bài cũng good nữa. Very good. Nên ngủ. Chào nè. <laughs> and let me be clear, this isn't to say that everything you do has to have transferable skills to medicine, although I think that they will anyway. Just by sharing your interests outside of medicine, medical school admissions committees will now be able to better appreciate the application, the person that they're evaluating in front of them. They'll remember that when you're not a bustling pre-med, you're a wedding videographer, a video game programmer, or a beauty blog contributor. That's certainly easier to remember and subsequently advocate for when they're deciding who gets in and who gets forgotten. 
you won't get into medical school without being relatable. The only exception is if you're that student with a 4.0 GPA, a 528 MCAT, triple majoring at Johns Hopkins with multiple first author publications. When you think about it, medical schools have a difficult job. They have to pick who they want to invest four years of hard-nosed training into based on a piece of paper and eventually your interview. And medical school isn't just pharmacology lectures and practice doctoring. It's the update emails you send the faculty that have supported you from day one. It's the inter-school athletic Olympics. It's the socials in Las Vegas. If you have a strong fundamental application, medical schools will be confident that you can handle the fast-paced curriculum, that you can ace your board exams, that you can understand the science behind medicine. What they're not so sure about is whether you can deliver the cancer diagnosis in an empathetic way or convince the 40 packier smoker to finally, finally quit, or whether you can lead a team of healthcare professionals without an ego. And I promise you that all of these important skills do not come with your fancy research microscope. To prove it to you, here are my two favorite real extracurricular activities that have nothing to do with medicine. I've won a couple of youth basketball championships at the Alpine Recreation Center in Chinatown. But last summer, I had the most fun lately winning my first as a coach. Every Sunday, as reprieve from MCAT studying, I coached the Hoopers, a ragtag team of 10-year-olds. After the championship game, the coaches and parents played against the Alpine staff, and it warmed my heart to see my players screaming my name and waving a fat head of myself. Sure, I taught some basketball, but more so, I taught these kids that losing was an opportunity for growth, that focused practice could be talent, and that the best teams looked out for each other. I smile every time I see a picture of those hideous bright yellow jerseys, knowing that they'd remember this summer fondly too. With COVID halting in-person events, six friends and I were determined to recreate attending live concerts. Thus, Book Club was born. Intentionally misnamed, we shared and scored albums each week based on production, repeatability, cohesiveness, and more. However, Points stopped mattering as music became a conduit for isolated friends to share news about life. Unexpected breakups called for Adele's 21 album, graduations meant uncorking tunes of electronic pop, and when a friend lost her grandpa, Bruno Major's soothing voice enveloped us in a warm hug. Book Club was more than pointing out catchy melodies. It helped me connect with people I cared about when staying in touch radically changed. Don't you get a better sense of who these people are? Perhaps you're even reminded of a friend with similar passions. And that's exactly what happens when you share your passions on your medical school application. So next time you feel guilty because you're scrolling social media and you see Ben publish a 17th author paper that he barely breathed on, or better yet, if a cutthroat pre-med or your parents questions what in the world you're spending all of your time on, take a deep breath. You should spend time on things that aren't medical school related. And now you can tell yourself and any of the haters that not only are you protecting your mental health by doing the things that you love, you're actually making yourself more competitive for medical school. You're becoming more relatable, more human, and eventually more competitive just by doing you. It's sad to say, but many of the 50,000 pre-meds who apply every year do not get in because their application is not a reflection of who they are and what they care about. And that's how basketball got me into medical school and how being you can get you into medical school. Mike, put your shoes on, we're next. Oh, all right, well, that's John. I guess we're next, so I'll see you next time. Oh, shoot, you're still here? Well, thanks for watching to the end of the video. And second, I, I was just working on this quiz. It's this medical school chances calculator. Uh, you just take a 10 question quiz and at the end of it, you get your strengths, your weaknesses, and a customized school list. If you want to take it, here's the QR code. I mean, if that didn't work, um, here's a QR code as well. And then I'll also put the link in the description box below. Well, I'm going to go back to fishing the quiz and I'll see you later.